so here we have set up a uh, secure auth consumer portal. It's a, a kind of uh, implementation using the secure auth APIs to provide a look at how organizations are implementing uh, all these pre-authentication risk checks, uh, multi-factor authentication natively within their applications. Uh, this is all achievable using secure auth RESTful APIs. Uh, it's very simple to integrate. In fact, you can navigate to our GitHub account at secure auth corp and you can find a number of SDKs already preloaded, ready for you to integrate with your application in some of the most popular languages uh, available for web development. Um, a typical user, when they're logging in, uh, is presented with a number of choices. Either they can register and log in locally using a username and password, or they can sign in with a social identity. In either case, SecureAuth can be applied to evaluate the criteria of that authentication for both users, or the context and signals uh, based upon that. Um, so as a user, if I'm going to log in with, say, my email address, uh, and I provide the system my password, I will be prompted for second factor authentication. The reason for this is that we're able to look at the device recognition of my device, which is telling me that, hey, it's not found. I've never seen this device before. And additionally, the ad adaptive authentication response says, based on this device recognition and the other layers of analysis that we're doing, off of a single endpoint, our suggested action is to two-factor my user at this point in time. So as a user, I can be presented with a, diff uh, a variety of choices of second-factor options or multi-factor options like Damon spoke about, uh, from text uh, sending one-time passcodes or maybe even a link to log users in, uh, to push notifications to a mobile app or login request or symbol to, re uh, to accept login requests to mobile devices. Uh, so when a user selects a multi-factor method, uh, they simply get the prompt to enter that code that they received. And once they've submitted that code, SecureAuth validates it against the API, and boom, the user is logged into a consumer portal. Now, what happens the next time the user goes to authenticate? Uh, when they've already authenticated uh, within a configurable time frame, uh, leveraging the APIs, you can then say, hey, the next time this user goes to log in, maybe we don't need to second factor. Very simply and, and, and very uh, quickly are pretty much the same as how uh, Damon stated it uh, as identifying these pre-risk analysis checks. Uh, when the user goes to log in their next time, they're instantly logged into their application because all those checks have been done and we have found that that user in this case maybe has a device already registered, so this is my previous login attempt, uh, or maybe already uh, uh, satisfies the other requirements that you've uh, associated with your organization in the secure off APIs. Uh, conversely, if maybe a user comes in from a Tor browser and that's not something that you wanna allow the user to do. Maybe the user uh, comes in from a known hacktivist site or something along those lines, you can choose to redirect the user, if I can type my email address here, you can choose to redirect the user to a page that informs them that, we, hey, we've detected some suspicious activity. Um, there's something wrong with your login attempt. And that we would put that user into a, a place where they could contact support or this event could be logged to your SIM or SOC. Uh, or even you could just simply step up the two-factor authentication depending on the result of that risk score. Uh, this, the process is very simple to integrate. We have a number of large customers and the millions of users who are currently using this platform to authenticate users. The idea and design behind the Secure Auth APIs is to allow you the flexibility to pick and choose what different uh, authentication mechanisms you're using at different points. For example, in registering an account, you may want to verify phone numbers and email addresses by sending a link or a one-time passcode uh, to those uh, different uh, entered users information, as well as validating the adaptive authentication stack and making sure that the user is actually coming from a legitimate source. Uh, this is a very common way for attackers to target things uh, such as uh, healthcare or insurance portals where a user may already be registered with the organization but may not have a portal account. Um, think of your bank account when you sign up for an account in, uh, in the actual branch. You may not have a portal login at first. You may have to take your account number and go register that account number. Well, attackers look for these things. They look for this, these portals that they know that their users pre-registered with some information. And they go to abuse that by actually creating or registering an account uh, at the origination source using that maybe breached or leaked information so that the good user never even gets the opportunity to register. The bad actor has already compromised it. 
by putting this adaptive authentication and these pre-authentication or really contextual authentication uh, information in front of things like registering an account, forgetting their username or password, um, even moving between protected areas of an application, such as moving into a wire transfer or moving into updating uh, life insurance beneficiary information, by placing all this in front of that, you get continuous authentication of looking at the continual contextual clues about how that user is authenticating. Um, whether the user logs in from LA, you know, five minutes ago and now is trying to log in from somewhere in Eastern Europe, whether they decide to switch to using the Tor browser, all that is indications and information that you can use to pivot your application's workflow to derive a very seamless authentication experience for those end users. Thank you.